Alright, ready to go. Wait, 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 wait. Just keep around the 20 minutes, that's good? Yeah. Yeah. 15 yeah, 15 will be good. Yeah, okay, yeah. As so long as I'm here, out of here by like 110, the All latest. Right. Yeah. Okay, Agreed. we're good to go. Ready? Ready, five, four, three, come on. Hello, everybody. Coach RJ here. I'm with our resident NP. Is that right? Resident That's NP. Right, yeah. uh, Marvin, I call him Dr. Marv, but he doesn't like to be called Dr. Marv. NP Marv. But he's, good, our, yeah. he's our specialist from the healthcare field. And so today we want to talk about boosting immune systems. Right now it's the kind of end of August for making that transition from hot to it could be cold right away. And so the flu season's amongst us. Yeah. And with COVID numbers rising, we want to make sure that everybody is mm. staying safe so that they could stay functional. Mm. Nobody wants to catch a cold and have to self-quarantine for two weeks when it could have been preventative in the first place. It might not go as far as COVID, but naturally this time of year, people probably get sick. Yeah. So in your, in your field, what are some of the common uh, calls that you'll get in and around like September, October? Uh, so around September, October, people are uh, inquiring about um, like flu vaccinations. Mm. You know, they, they want to get prepared for the winter season. Mm. Uh, right now in particular, you know, we not only are we worrying about flu, but, you know, with the rise uh, in the numbers that we're getting mm. uh, in COVID, uh, we have to continue to be really diligent about protecting our immune system, right? Mm. And so, um, you know, we get a lot of calls about that. You know, we still have a lot of COVID testing sites, you know, if, if someone's been exposed or if they have potential uh, uh, symptoms to COVID. Mm. Uh, and so, you know, part of what I'm uh, teaching right now uh, to all my clients is that uh, any public facility you're attending right now, uh, slowly, they're mandating that masks are worn okay. uh, in all public areas, right? Yeah. You, you can see it at some of these, um, you know, like Superstore and Walmart, they're, they're starting to mandate it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of, uh, you know, medical facilities are going to be mandating it, um, where you, if you don't have a mask, you're not, you're not allowed to, to come in there. Okay. Okay. Um, you know, some of the things I'm teaching is that uh, what you already know, it's uh, pre preventing the bugs from getting inside you, right? Okay. So uh, one, making sure that you're washing your hands, right? And you want to get in between your, you know, your fingernails and in, in between the fingers. Um, and, you know, other things to do is to make sure that um, when you're wearing a mask, it doesn't have to be a medical grade mask if you're out in the public. And then uh, socially, you know, if, if... So let me ask you this about the masks. I, I see people wearing bandanas. People got these like fancy masks now where they got these crazy designs. Does that help in any... Anyway, like is anything over your face better than nothing or should you have I, at least some type of PPE? Yeah. So you remember back when, uh, back in the beginning when COVID started, we said, you know, you don't need to wear masks. And then now we're, we're kind of promoting it. The idea uh, behind it is that um, you're protecting others because, you know, it, it'll prevent at least that mm, um, spray. Mo most of the, the spray that comes mm. out of your mouth if you're talking to someone. Uh, and so that'll prevent, you know, getting it on surfaces. So it doesn't provide great. 100% coverage, but it's better than nothing. Okay. Yeah. So can you differentiate between the common cold that most people will get in and around this time? So, if, you know, let's say somebody gets the sniffles or somebody has a sore throat versus like getting actually actual COVID. Mm. So can you differentiate? So what would be, is there different levels of a cold? And is there different levels of COVID or is it like once you get COVID, you've got COVID and like, yeah, you know, it's a, uh, it's a great question. And, uh, for the most part in general, when people have a cold, their symptoms are very mild, right? Okay. Runny nose, scratchy throat. They might have a cough. Um, and then when you get into like a flu or uh, COVID symptoms, your, your symptoms are, are a lot worse. Um, so you, you can get, uh, your cough can be more debilitating. It can cause you to wheeze a little bit or feel short of breath. Uh, and also it can cause, you know, high fevers. It can cause you to feel very weak. You get muscle soreness. Mm. Uh, and so those are the symptoms that we differentiate. Okay. But they overlap too because, you know, the younger people who have good immune systems, they, uh, they fight COVID or mm. flu better. And so their symptoms are very mild. But then in older populations, you know, colds and flus, they can they can appear really bad. So um, one of the ways that we can uh, we can actually test for it, right? We have the COVID testing and we can actually test for influenza as well. Mm -hmm. And the same thing, it's like a nasal swab. And you do that? We do that, yeah. We, you? 
no, my yeah, my clinic does that. Okay, yeah. Uh, I recommend though, if uh, if you're worried about COVID, you mm. want to go to a COVID testing site. They're mm. properly equipped there. Okay. Uh, we won't ex- accept anyone who's wanting to get tested for COVID. It's just better uh, to make sure that we we send everyone who has a possible COVID to the right place just to reduce transmission. So. Okay. So would you say somebody that potentially has a cold, should they still go and get tested for COVID? Or what's the procedure for somebody that, you know, the, the, everybody's going to have some type of cold coming up, right? Like you don't go a full season without some type of scratchy throat or something. So if you get that, should you go and get tested or should you maybe wait until your symptoms get a little bit more severe? Yeah, uh, so uh, it's a good question. I think it depends uh, for the most part. If you have a cold but you work in uh, a public facility, mm-hmm. it's probably a good idea to get tested because you don't want to go back to work mm-hmm. um, even after your cold or flu has subsided. Because okay. uh, potentially if you have COVID and it, it's very mild, you could still be spreading it after you've uh, completed it. So it's a good idea to get tested if you're having any of the symptoms mm-hmm. and you're working in a public facility. Mm-hmm. You know, if, you, if you're uh, if you're stay at home and you, you just have a mild cold, I wouldn't you know, I, I wouldn't push it to get the, the COVID testing unless, you know, you're you're worried or, in fact, you're, you know, you have good reason to get tested. So if you've traveled or if you've been exposed to someone with COVID, then those are all good ideas to get tested, even if your symptoms are mild. Yeah. So if somebody has a cold, like I guess you kind of answered that, if somebody has a cold, even if it's just a runny nose, should they self-quarantine for two weeks? Not necessarily. I think if... Um, They've traveled again. If 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 there's potential for COVID, then they should, mm. uh, and they should get tested as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but if it's just a cold and they don't have a cough, um, you know, just a runny nose, you know, scratchy throat, uh, for the most part, um, they want you to stay at home until your symptoms are totally gone. Okay, okay. that's the general rule, and then uh, and then come back to work when you're feeling better. Okay, so it's not necessary. You got to be like you get a runny nose today. I got to stay home for two weeks. It's a matter of like when the runny nose goes away and you feel better, then you could potentially open yourself up to going back into the general yeah, public. I, exactly. And, uh, you know, we're, we're trying to, we're just simplifying it right now. But mm-hmm. the, the best way I think is you can still call health links and get advice whether or not you should get tested for COVID mm-hmm. or go on the shared health website. You know, they still have the online screening tool mm-hmm. and it's great to just, okay, I have this, this, no, I don't need this. And then it'll tell you at the end, whether or not you, you need to get tested for COVID. Because there's a lot of different scenarios and not everyone needs to get tested, but you know some people do. So just to simplify. What is that called? The It's uh, uh, through sharedhealthmb.ca. Um, yep. yep. uh, they have a COVID-19 uh, screening tool. Jerome, are you able to pull that up? Uh, COVID-19 no. screening tool. We'll, try that. Okay. We'll, we'll post it. At, uh, we'll, yeah. we'll post the link in the comment yeah. section. Yeah. And uh, it's been posted before, so it's a, you know if you've ever used it, the same uh, same web link that mm-hmm. we talked about previously. All right, so let's get into ways of boosting immune systems. Mm-hmm. So you talked about the preventative measures like wearing a mask, uh, washing your hands, mm-hmm. um, obviously not exposing yourself to high risk individuals. I guess yeah. that would be like the obvious. Yeah. But are there are there any medical ways? Maybe there isn't. Mm-hmm. It's for people to boost their immune system. Yeah, well, one thing is the, uh, you know, immunizations, right? So uh, immunizations are very important. Um, you know, people have different opinions, but the, the flu vaccine, it's not the best type of vaccine to prevent flu. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they're about maybe between 40 to 60% effective. Mm-hmm. And it's a guessing game. They, uh, the way they design it is they, they look at what strains were out there the year before, or the years past, and they mm-hmm. try to predict which ones they should put in the vaccine. Okay. No, those are the those are the ones that um, that you're protected against. But there's so many different types of strains, but they, they they do their best to choose the ones that will prevent you from having a really bad flu or going to the hospital. Uh, so flu vaccine is uh, one, and then yeah, just making sure all your um, immunizations are updated, uh, especially for elderly. You know, they you want to make sure that. Um, your pneumonia shot uh, is updated. And if you're a kid, have those routine uh, immunizations that you get, uh, you know, as a child uh, and, and in school updated as well. So, it's dumb question, but these uh, flu vaccines, right, The they're injectables, correct? Mm-hmm. So when they inject it, what are they injecting in you? 
So they um, they actually inject um, different strains of the flu, and they're uh, they're not live viruses, uh, but they just like any vaccination that you get, um, they're like a they're like a code. Mm -hmm. They basically tell your body, um, okay, this is what you need to fight in terms of the infection, mm -hmm. and so that when you do get exposed to it, your body already knows how to fight it. Okay, so it's it's kind of like a it's kind of like a hack, like an immune system hack. And so, um, otherwise, if you if you didn't have the vaccine, then your your body has to fight it full blown, and it may not know how. And that's what when where people get really sick. So if you, if you think about uh, chicken pox, right? Mm -hmm. People don't get chicken pox anymore. And remember that when people used to get chicken pox, they get the antibodies, and so then they never get it again, even if they get exposed. Uh, so now that we're given the chicken pox vaccine, which is varicella, people don't get chicken pox. And even if they get exposed, they don't get it because the vaccine already knows how to deal with it. Mm. All right. And so your, their immune system is prepared. And so that's the idea be behind uh, immunizations and vaccines. OK, so let me ask you this. If, if we're constantly washing our hands, I mean, we've got these these, uh, you know, we got soap everywhere. We've yeah. got these, you know alcohol that kills yeah, germs on contact yeah, everywhere. if we're constantly doing that so when i go from the gym to the grocery store to my car to home and i'm constantly constantly like disinfecting my hands you're talking about like minor exposures to germs and things like that mm -hmm. if you're never exposed to this stuff how are you ever going to build an immunity to it yeah. and you know that's uh, that's a tough thing there's this theory that in the Western countries, because we're so um, antibacteria, antiviral, um, there's a lot more people with things like allergies and impaired immune systems because they don't have the same exposure mm -hmm. that we had maybe 50 years ago when people were rolling out around in the mud and kids were playing in the sand, right? Um, and so it, it, it's a tough thing because you do want, for me, my idea is that exposure is good. Okay, but you want to prevent the bad ones, right? So you want to prevent things that, like the vaccinations, right? You want to prevent measles, you know, rubella, all those that are really serious mm -hmm. but preventable. And now we want to prevent COVID, right? And so people are preventing, trying to get a vaccine together. Um, but you do need you do need exposure, though. I think, uh, and your your immune system, even with my kids, you know, I'm not washing everything around them. I'm letting them dig in put their hands in their mouth, everything, right? You yeah. just can't, but you, you need to build that immunity. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I, I um, so I'm not super strict in that sense, but I, I think if you're 100% strict, like you were saying, washing mm -hmm. down everything, I think that will affect your immunity because mm -hmm. your body won't learn how to fight certain, like, you know, everyday things, right? Yeah. I think a lot, I think a lot of people, maybe not so much here in Manitoba, but I can only imagine in other cities and countries some people just are not leaving their house mm -hmm. and that's to me is even scarier you, you know what i mean because if you don't leave your house yeah you don't get covid but at the same time if you don't even go outdoors to like it, you know embrace the seasonal changes because you're afraid to get in contact with covid or if you're not like touching dirt or if you're not like you said like if my kid doesn't touch dirt if he doesn't touch the ground like they're touching everything bugs yeah. everything yeah, i can't yeah. prevent that and to me, you know, there's a certain amount of exposure. Like, I, I don't want my kid to touch fire, yeah. right? But I want him to know what fire is yeah. and feel the heat so he yeah. knows not to go near it, yeah, absolutely. right? And so I think that you have to have some level of exposure. Yeah. And I think that some people have to go out and start to, maybe not so much for to, to build up an immunity to, the, to, the, to COVID yeah. or whatever virus is out there, but you also have to, like, for a mental right? Because if you isolate yeah. yourself for too long, yeah. and even if you're communicating through, like, this is not the same. This is why you drove down here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. And if we were doing it through Zoom, that's a whole different story. Yeah. And it's just not the same as a personal one-on-one -on -one connection. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? It's a good segue into kind of the next part of um, building your immune system mm -hmm. is that uh, you have to maintain the mental health, right? Yeah. And so um, people get sick when they're depressed or they're yeah. anxious. Mm -hmm. Like, they're their body is either in overdrive yeah. or it's a, you know it, it's not doing anything. Mm -hmm. Their their you know, their metabolism is super low. They start to gain weight, and uh, they're just become socially isolated. And so 
people need to get out. They need to get exposed to the sun. They need to sweat a little bit. They need to talk to people. Mm -hmm. You know, you can still shake people's hands. And Mm -hmm. so, like, um, my sense is that if you know someone and you know them personally, I think you can kind of break those social, you know, distancing rules. Like, you know, if it was my family, uh, like my parents would come over or something like I'm going to hug them, right? I'm going to shake their hands. And then, but if it's more like strangers, then, then you want to be more careful. You want to practice the social distancing, but the mental health part, people underappreciate that. It's so important. Mm. It's, it's really about the immune system. When you get exercise, when you're eating well, and you're you're interacting that's really what prepares your immune system because everything's working right because mm-hmm. it's it's a it's a connection between your brain and it's a connection to your body too well if you think about when we were children most of us that had parents right some people didn't have parents mm-hmm. we were held mm-hmm. right you know when our kids cry what's the first thing you do you don't ask them what's wrong because they can't communicate back to you. Yeah. What is the first thing you do? Oh, yeah, you pick, you them, pick up them up. Hold. Yeah. Right? And right so yeah. as we become adults, we lose that that being nurtured, yeah. being held. Right. right? And now with this whole COVID thing, it's like people are not physical touching anymore. Yeah. Right? Because of the fear. Yeah. And so I'm not saying that, yeah, you should go out and shake everybody's hands. And, and honestly, when somebody shakes my hand, I'll shake their hand. But then... You know, sanitize I'm sanitizing after a while. I make sh- clear, yeah. make it in my head. Okay, shake this guy's hand, go to the washroom, wash your hands, get under the nails, whatever. Yeah. yeah. But I don't ever want to lose that physical connection. Yeah. And so I think that outside, you know, this is like just you and I talking as friends versus, you know, you giving me medical advice and mm-hmm. same, you know, back and forth is that you can't, you know, you can't eliminate that physical touch. But you can do ways afterwards yeah. where you can clean it off and do all your yeah. things. So Absolutely. let's just quickly go into there and then we'll, we'll cap it off here. This is one of the supplements that I take. And I actually started taking Echinacea prior to like this whole COVID thing. I actually started really being conscious of my immune system uh, when I started coaching again full time, when I started having to wake up earlier. Mm-hmm. So I had to like train my body and I was not, I didn't give myself an opportunity to get sick throughout winter. And one of the big things that people right now, especially coming to the gym is the workout and because they're sweating and they're hot. Mm. Oh, I don't need a jacket, you know, and it could be minus 10 out, you know what I mean? And they're like, I don't need a jacket. Well, not only after you do a workout, yes, you build your immune system through working out, but post workout, You've just caused a lot of micro trauma. Yeah. And so you're more susceptible to getting sick mm-hmm. post workout. And if you're exposing bare skin, sweat, and your immune system is already slightly compromised for that brief period of time, yeah. you've just increased your risks of getting sick. Yeah. Yeah. And so the one thing I would tell everybody is that it's getting cooler out. Start bringing a sweater, bring layers, mm-hmm. because it could be warm in the morning and cold in the evening. Yeah. And if you're working out after work or whatever it might be, don't expose yourself. Don't open up the chances of you getting sick. Yeah. The second one I tell people is to start slowly exposing yourself to the cool, right? So if you go from an indoor environment to a brief moment outdoors where it's warm out, to your car where it's warm and then you go to a house where it's warm and then all of a sudden it starts getting cold again and you just go from outdoors or indoors to your car which mine's in my garage so yeah. I never le- I never get exposed to the, the snow yeah. and then I come here park here and I walk outside briefly I would tell people to start to crack a window in the house yeah rely less on your air conditioning now mm-hmm. and start relying more on the natural breezes so first thing in the morning I always crack a door yeah. Like both our doors, so my kids are getting that yeah. outdoor exposure. I crack the window while I'm working. I might have a sweater on, mm-hmm. but I'm building up my immunities for my tolerance because it is getting colder. And so I'm building up my immunities to be able to tolerate the cooler environment. Yeah. And then the third is this echinacea supplement. And I'll tell you this, Marvin, this was one of the hardest supplements to get when COVID first hit. Oh, is that right? You, yeah. you would they, This Jameson bought this yeah. thing I bought for... 10 bucks or whatever yeah. it is at Superstore. Yeah. This on Amazon. Well, actually, I tried to order 30 of these just to have here for members. Yeah. Sold out. Like all of Superstore. Yeah. This yeah. was pro- wait, like as soon as COVID hit. Yeah. I tried to order 30 of these. Completely sold out. Wow. 
on Amazon, these were selling, this $10 bottle was selling for $69 to $120. Same bottle. Wow, yeah, yeah. Right? Now, does it work? Who knows? But <laughs> what they're saying in the supplement world is that it builds up your, your white blood cells. Okay. So, so what does that do when they build up their white blood cells? Well, your white blood cells are your primary tool that your body uses when you get an infection. Mm -hmm. So you, you need a healthy white count okay. uh, to be able to fight infection. Yep. Yeah. So that's what it does is it increases your white blood cells. Also in this one, which I actually really like, is, is uh, vitamin C. Yeah. Well, that's so what great. does vitamin yeah. C do? Uh, well, vitamin C is, uh, plays an important role just uh, in your body's metabolism, mm. and, and it's good for like muscle and uh, neurological function too. Okay. You know anything about ginger? Uh, you know, it, it's a good natural supplement. Yeah. Um, people use it for all kinds of things, like mm. when women are pregnant. They yes. can use it for nausea and vomiting. Okay. It works great for a lot of a uh, lot of different. So, things, like so. any of the feverish things that you might get, it helps yeah. to decrease that. So Absolutely. maybe not so much like directly affecting the fever, mm. but helping with the symptoms. Yeah, exactly. Makes sense. So there we have it. We have don't expose, don't increase your exposure. And don't allow yourself to get sick. Yes. So start bundling up. Yeah. Get there early. Yes, it's still yeah. warm out and we don't want to let go of summer. I yeah. get it. But at some point in time, we're going to have to transition from t-shirt to yeah, sweater exactly. to light jacket, light jacket vest. Then yeah. just get right into your jacket, man. Like <laughs> You know, I, I like that idea that you mentioned about open, cracking a window. Yeah. Like, how important is cracking a window, right? Like just getting some natural air in the yeah. house too and yeah. getting uh, getting your body prepared for the climate. I think mm -hmm. that's a great idea. And it's nice. Yeah. Like crack the window, let that air flow in. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's, it's not only helping you, but it's helping everybody in the household as well. Yes. And then the last but not least, my highly recommendation is everybody start on this supplement now. Mm -hmm. It's not probably as strong as the vaccine, but it's something that you can go and get. It's just yeah. one pill a day and just run it all the way throughout winter. So like, this is my winter supplement. I yeah. take this, I take the, and vitamin D, yeah. right? Like I'm pretty tanned right now, yeah. but Very get, you know, hit me in December, D. January, yeah. especially if we're not traveling anywhere. Yeah, then absolutely. I take the liquid drops and I go pretty heavy with it, Okay. Yeah. right? And then in the summer, I just completely cut this off because mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. not necessary, right? Yeah. I mean, and just... you know, uh, to a lot of clients that I see, I also recommend just a daily multivitamin, mm. uh, just so it, it kind of gets you a little bit of everything. And yeah. it's just a supplement to, you know, uh, the supplements that you're already taking, mm. and that will help to kind of prime and uh, prepare the immune system as well. So there we have it. Marvin, NP, Coach RJ. We have it. We have time. We can get ahead of this. Yeah, let's absolutely. build up our immune systems. Let's keep working out. And let's get 1% better every single day. Awesome. Thank you, Marvin. All right. Thanks for having me.